The opinions and interpretations expressed in this and other videos are that of Marty Huey and may not be representative of his colleagues and employer. The videos cover overlapping requirements of codes, standards, and regulations. Your situation will require full analysis beyond the concepts presented here. This video is on air balance, HVAC. Most rooms are neutral. That means no air in, no air out as it relates to the room and its size. Most other rooms, we are designed to negative pressure, such as toilet rooms. In hospitals, we have soiled utility rooms, soiled hold room, and most importantly, isolation rooms. Isolation rooms are used for rooms such as tuberculosis, TB, or as we most recently seen in the news, Ebola, or any other rooms where the patient may have a disease or may contaminate other patients, staff, or the floor. Now, with positive pressure isolation rooms, that's not a code requirement that we have to follow. We might have to design to one due to the fact that we might have a immune compromised patient, such as a cancer patient. Otherwise, our positive pressure rooms are used for clean supply rooms or laboratories. With immune compromise, we're strictly looking at cancer patients or other patients where they could easily catch a cold or a flu. Let's draw a room. And in that room, we have a supply duct shown here with an S and an X through it of 300 cubic feet per minute of air. Let's draw a return air duct. Typically, it's one line through it drawn here. Let's put an R here for return. And it's 300 cubic feet of air leaving the room. So the amount of air going in and the amount of air coming out are the same for that room is considered neutral. With this room, we have 300 cubic feet of air coming into the space, the supply, and we have a return air of only 200. So therefore, any air that cannot be returned is being forced out of the room. And when the door is open, most of the air is going through the door. Otherwise, the air is being forced out through either the windows or the surrounding spaces or walls. It's got to go somewhere. With this room, we have a supply of 300 cubic feet of air coming into the room. We have a return of 400 cubic feet of air. That means there's more air being sucked out of the room than being supplied. So therefore, when the door is open, more air will flow through the door. When the door is shut, air will come in through the walls to make up for that additional cubic feet of air needed for the return side. So this room here is positive and this room here is negative. In relationship to toilets, our rooms are negative pressure. Therefore, any odor is being exhausted outside. A great way of applying a test to see if the room is neutral, positive, or negative is the single ply toilet paper test where you have more then one ply on a toilet paper, separate one sheet so you have a single ply toilet paper, have it two or three squares long, and open the door slightly and hold the toilet paper at the edge of the door. If the toilet paper does not move, that is neutral. If the toilet paper is being blown out of the room and, it, and everything is tested in relationship to the corridor, that means that room is positive. If it's being sucked into that room, that means that room is negative. So any toilet room, gang toilet, office toilet space, should always be negative relationship to the space surrounding it. Now let's look at a patient room that we might consider negative pressure. Now the arrangements of the supply air to the return air is typically as I've shown it here but can vary due to a number of other circumstances. So we have a low wall return that means the air return duct is low in the room and the supply air is typically in the ceiling and, and in this room there's more air being sucked out than being blown in and when the door is shut air is being pulled around the door or when it's open it's flowing through the door and in this arrangement and in most arrangements a staff member can enter the room take a look at the patient and air is being sucked across the patient to the low wall return on the opposite side of the staff, therefore helping to aid in protecting the staff from compromise to any diseases or any such. Now with anything, there is additional steps or levels of protection. This design here showing an anteroom. The big patient room doors off the corridor are strictly to move the bed back and forth. The anteroom 
is how family members or staff may enter the room once a patient is set in the room. This would allow an additional level of protection to keep any contaminants from leaving the room. The ante room would be neutral to the corridor and with the supply air being less than the return air. When the anteroom door is open to the patient, air will move from the anteroom into the room itself, additionally helping protect the staff and the floor from being compromised by any other disease or bacteria. This level of protection is among the highest we do typically in a hospital. For where we have Ebola patients, there is an additional level of protection that happens. We will have an anteroom to the unit. This becomes an airlock to the space. And where we might have two or more TB patients, this would allow multiple patients to be housed in a single suite or set of rooms that would help protect protect the staff and it gives the staff the ability to change clothes within the airlock and then have additional level protection within the anteroom. Please post or email comments on what you've seen. Suggestions for future topics are also welcome. Marty enjoys learning from the experience of others. More videos will be added, which can be found at martyhuey.com.